practice for the shoulder joint or the glenohumeral joint. And this is one that gets a little bit tricky in yoga. We'll start out with the pure movements, the ones that are a little bit easier to get a handle on. And we'll start in our half anatomical position. You can be in any comfortable seat or you can even do this one in a chair. But we'll start in upper body anatomical position with the arms in neutral. So the first pure movement of the shoulder is flexion. And flexion is something that happens in the sagittal plane. You go all the way up. Usually it's about 170-ish degrees. As I start to come down, I'm moving away from flexion, so I'm going toward extension. Okay, but I'm going to stop at neutral, right at the sides of the body. From there, I go into extension, and that is moving my arm back behind my body. Also happening in the sagittal plane, okay? Splitting in half from side to side, but in this case, it would be a plane that goes down the arm like that, and you're moving forward into flexion on the sagittal plane, then moving back into shoulder extension on the sagittal plane. Okay, the other pure movement that we do is abduction, abduction, or taking away from the center line, and that happens out to the sides, up, about 170 or 180 degrees also, moving down toward adduction. When you're moving away from abduction, coming back toward the center of the body, you're adducting, adducting. Okay, so abducting, taking it away, thinking about being kidnapped, and then adducting, you're adding it back toward the center of the body. So those are two movements that you're going to see a lot in your yoga practice. We do a ton of overhead reaching, right? Warrior one, when you're coming into warrior one and you bring your arms up into flexion, if you're in warrior two, your arms would be out into abduction, 90 degrees of abduction for warrior two, okay? The movement that I like to talk about that's halfway in between those two is scaption. And scaption is a movement plane that makes your scapula and your rotator cuff happy. So if you have somebody in your class who has a shoulder injury, this is a plane of movement that might be more agreeable to their shoulders if they do feel comfortable lifting their arms up and down. It's halfway in between pure flexion and pure abduction. So instead of coming straight up like this, they would be about 45 degrees off center and the arms make kind of a V shape. And you would rise up like that, just as high as your shoulders feel happy going, and you'd come back down. So it's just an angle off center and you can try that movement, see what that shoulder blade feels like as you go up and down. It's an easier plane of movement for the scapula to do that upward rotation as the arms go into scaption and then downward rotation. You're moving on the plane of the scapula. Okay, so flexion, scaption, and ab Reduction. Okay, then extension. One of my favorite shoulder stretches is in extension because we spend so much time in shoulder flexion. When you're driving, you have shoulder flexion. When you're reaching for things up in a cabinet, you're doing shoulder flexion. Everything we do is in that front area of the body. So we need to do a lot of stretches going into shoulder extension to counteract that and keep our shoulders healthy and balanced. So we bring the arms back behind the body into shoulder extension. It's important to understand that extension doesn't just happen when the arm moves away from the body, but it also happens when the body moves away from the arm. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that. To come into the first part of extension, I move my arms back, but to deepen this shoulder extension, I actually move my body forward. Okay, and that just helps me to get that perfect amount of stretch there. I start to lift slightly with my chest, and you will really feel this lovely stretch across the front of the shoulder joint, the glenohumeral joint. Okay, take one more breath like that. 
releasing your body back towards your arms, coming out of that extension, releasing your arms towards your body. And we'll go into one of my other favorite shoulder extension stretches, which would be yoga mudra. So we take the arms from neutral at the sides back into extension, and then you clasp the hands together and start to float the arms back. You can do this in so many different positions. You can do it in forward bend um, with the feet together or with the feet apart and just let the arms drop behind you. But keep in mind it's still shoulder extension even when the body is upside down. So let's try that version of it. I'll come up, clasp the arms behind the back so I start to move toward extension. But then I'm going to deepen that. I'm going into hip flexion, right? Softening my knees, spine flexion, and then moving my arms back even deeper into shoulder extension. Bringing myself up by taking my spine back toward neutral, coming out of hip flexion, bringing my head into neutral, my arms come back toward my body, so I'm releasing some of that shoulder extension, and I'm back into mountain pose. Okay, So think about the movements that you have to go into for the pose and how you come out of them. That's really going to be helpful when you're trying to figure out which movements are happening in each pose. Okay, so we have flexion and abduction, and we do that a lot when we're doing um, like a sun breath. If you're inhaling, bringing the arms up, and you're exhaling, bringing the arms down. And you could even do that in the scapular plane out toward the front. So then we have horizontal adduction and abduction, which is a little bit more confusing. But I like to do this breath in yoga called the heart opening breath, and it incorporates that horizontal movement. But let's start out, we're in 90 degrees of abduction. Okay, so we move from anatomical position out 90 degrees. We're on the horizontal plane, right? Here's the horizon. And from the horizon, I'm going to adduct, a deduct. I'm moving toward the center line. My arms can actually cross each other at the center line. And then I'm going to horizontally abduct. And I can even go back past my shoulders. That's the full amount of horizontal abduction. Okay, so horizontal adduction and horizontal abduction. The movement that I do for that is the heart opening breath where you start out at the heart with the palms together. You're going to come up, open the arms back as far as you can, horizontal abduction. As you exhale, the palms come together, horizontal adduction to the center line elbow flexion into the heart, elbow extension, take the arms forward, horizontal abduction, open all the way back. You'll feel scapular retraction when you get into that end range of horizontal abduction, horizontal adduction, elbow flexion into the heart, elbow extension. Now as I move into elbow extension, I'm also moving into shoulder flexion. Shoulder flexion gets me onto the horizontal plane. From that horizontal plane, I move toward horizontal abduction and horizontal adduction. Now I'm going to add another movement into here. One of the movements that we like to do that brings us into horizontal adduction is Eagle Pose. So I can wrap my arms around there. We're on the horizontal plane with the elbows and I'm crossed midline. So each elbow is going off to the opposite side. As I untwist, I'm going to horizontally abduct to open, retract my scapula, horizontally adduct, cross the arms, nest the elbows together, and wrap. Unwrap, horizontally abduct, let the arms drop down to the sides into neutral. 
So now we come to the confusing one, which is shoulder internal rotation and external rotation. Or sometimes you'll hear it called medial rotation and lateral rotation because the humeral head is rotating medially and laterally. But like everything else, start out in anatomical position. From here, I'll come up so that you can see it a little bit better. So I'm in neutral, okay? Mountain pose, this would be kneeling mountain pose in yoga or almost anatomical position. I'm going to go into internal or medial rotation by just keeping the arm totally straight and rolling the head of the humerus in. And then I'm going into lateral or lateral <laughs> rotation or external rotation is what I usually call it by rolling the humeral head out to the sides laterally, externally. Feel that space that it creates through the chest. We like that posture. We like that position in the shoulder. Okay, so internal rotation. Notice my thumb is reaching toward the wall behind me. External rotation. Notice my pinky is reaching forward. Okay, so the difference between those two orientations with my hand are really helpful, but don't be guided solely by the hand because you'll notice when we get down to the forearm, the hand can rotate completely independently of the shoulder rotation. And you have to be careful that you're not just rotating down here and it's not affecting the shoulder. You have to think of it as a whole arm spiral. So that's internal and external rotation at neutral. When we start to move the arms, that's when we get confused. But start down here, externally rotate, reach your pinky fingers forward, then go into shoulder flexion. So this would be like coming up into warrior one, rising the arms up. It's like you're turning the fingers in toward the center. And a lot of times you'll see me do this kind of fancy position with my fingers because this is my reminder to rotate the entire arm externally. It doesn't feel like external when your arm is up over your head because everything is kind of backwards, but bring your arm down without releasing that rotation and you'll feel there you are in external rotation, the pinky is going forward. Just swing the arm up and don't unrotate. There's your external rotation. Okay, now let's bend the elbows and try that. We're externally rotated, we're going to come into abduction with the shoulders elbow flexion, the hands are at the back of the head. I start to draw my elbows back. External rotation goes really well with thoracic spine extension. And then I'm going to release my hands from that external rotation and come down. Now the internally rotated position with my elbows bent I'm going to turn in, right? So feel that little hunch at the shoulders, bending the elbows into flexion, and my hands are behind my back. So I'll show you the back like that. But check out the position of the shoulder, rolled in, okay? I'm going to release that, come down, and there's my internal rotation. I'm going to come back into neutral and external rotation. One of the other positions that we like to play around with that is in cactus. We love to do cactus, um, especially down on the back, I love cactus, because you can just drop the arms back into the floor and let everything relax and really open up. But this is an externally rotated position. If I bring my arms down, then you'll start to see the external rotation more easily, but it's a very open, rolled back position. If I drop into what I like to call the puppet pose, where my arms are just dangling, that's internally rotated. And you can spin back and forth between those two. External rotation, notice how I move naturally into some neck extension, some thoracic spine extension. And then as I internally rotate, I tend to move down into neck flexion and thoracic spine flexion. And drop that down. So one of the stretches that I'll show you that I really like to do for internal rotation is actually in Malasana, in deep squat. You come down like that, 
And we usually hold prayer when we're in this position, but I'm going to take my hands, bring the back of my hands together and kind of roll them in. I rest the back of my hands onto my body, start to squeeze in with my knees. So it's rolling my shoulders into internal rotation. And it feels really nice. It's stretching the muscles at the back of my shoulder blades. We don't need to do a tremendous amount of internal rotation stretching because like I said, we already do a lot of internal rotation during the day. So external rotation is the one that we need to focus on more because it balances us out from our normal day-to-day -day stuff. Okay, we'll release the arms, drop the knees down. Okay, do a little scapular movement. We have that scapular elevation, retraction, depression, protraction to create the full circle. Good. And drop the arms down. Make sure that you play around with the understanding of internal rotation and external rotation at the glenohumeral joint because as you move your arms into different positions, it gets a little bit tricky to understand what's internal and what's external. So try that in different positions, especially arms up over the head or when you're going into a side bend, thinking about the position of the pinky and letting that roll all the way down your shoulder. Bring it back into anatomical position to see which way you were actually rotating. External rotation is the one that we really want to try to emphasize in our practice. Thank you for joining me. Namaste.